Hi everyone, it's Kamil and this is a 15th episode in the series dedicated to create a cryptocurrency trading bot in Elixir. If you are new here, read the description below, you will find a link to the GitHub repository where I'm placing all the code to follow along. Otherwise, in this video we will focus on getting the Elixir registry working with our implementation. Recently I resurrected my Twitter account, so if you want to get some insights early on, remember to follow me there. Otherwise, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Enjoy! Before we will jump into introducing the registry, we need to take care of some tidy up of our code base to improve its quality. The first thing we will do is to move the schema files inside the data warehouse application into their own directory and update all references to them. Next we will rename the subscribers directory. As we are already here we can remove the previous boilerplate that we left behind to supervise the worker. The last update to our codebase will be to decide that from now on all our symbols and topics will be uppercase only. This will reduce the cognitive load in regards to which parts are upper or lowercase and we will be left with only single place in the whole code base which uses the lowercase symbol that is inside the Binance streamer as otherwise it won't work. We will update each application separately as we will refactor it to use the registry. We can now move on to upgrading the data warehouse application to allow us to refactor it to use the registry. The first thing to do will be to add the subscriber settings table together with the enum. Next, we will begin to create the supervision tree starting with the subscriber supervisor which will be responsible for starting the subscriber worker registry together with the dynamic supervisor to supervise the workers and the task to auto start them. Next, we'll create the dynamic supervisor responsible for supervising the workers. This module also contains all the logic related to starting, stopping and auto-starting workers.
we will start with auto start workers function which will select all the enabled topics and start the worker processes using the dynamic supervisor function wrapped inside the private function. Nothing new here, but we will now move on to the start worker function, which will show how relying on the registry could dramatically simplify our code. Let's stop here for a second and figure out how we could get away with this simple implementation. When we are calling the start child function from the dynamic supervisor module, it calls the start link function of the past module, which in our case is the worker module. Inside the start link function of the worker module, we will call the start link function of the gen server module with the name inside the third keyword argument as a special tuple. Passing this tuple will cause the gen server to use the registry module to register the process under the past value. In our case, it's a topic. Two things can happen here. Either a registry will refuse to start a new process as there's one already there and it will return the error tuple with the current process PID, otherwise it will start a new worker process and save the PID under the process topic. Ultimately one of those two results will become the result of our initial start worker function call. Back to the code, we need to implement the update status function and we can then move on to the stop worker function where we will rely on the registry module to look up the PID of the worker process based on the topic. We can now update the worker module to instruct the gen server to use the registry. Beside that, we will simplify the interface of the module by allowing the user to send the topic string instead of the stream name and the symbols separately. We will move the logic responsible for guarding the case of those strings as well as joining them to the main data warehouse interface. On the way we need to update the children list of the application module to start our new subscriber supervisor and register itself as an application for consistency with the other applications in our umbrella. As pointed out before, we will now uppercase both the symbol and the stream arguments inside the data warehouse module. Decisions like that are quite subtle, but they pay off long term. That finishes the implementation part of the data warehouse application. We will now copy the dynamic supervisor's code to the dynamic streamer supervisor inside the streamer application. We will need to tweak a few things here as the streamer application works with a different database schema. Besides that, inside the streamer and the naive applications, we will only update the existing records as they are already inserted using the seed scripts. We will need to remember about adding the registry to the children list of the streamer supervisor module. As with the data warehouse interface module, we will need to update the streamer applications interface to uppercase incoming symbol arguments.
Lastly, we'll need to update the streamer Binance module to store an uppercase symbol in its state and use lowercase symbol to build the stream URL. We'll also update the PubSub topic to all uppercase and use the registry to keep track of pits associated with symbols. That finishes the implementation of the streamer application. We can now copy the code of the dynamic streamer supervisor into dynamic symbol supervisor inside the naive application. There's even less tweaking to do here, just log messages and simplifying the shutdown trading function to work with the registry. We can now move on to the children list of the naive supervisor where we will add the registry to keep track of the symbol supervisors. Next we will modify the symbol supervisor itself to register processes with the registry. I also realized that we left the naive server behind. We can now remove that file. As with other applications, we will update the naive interface module to uppercase symbol arguments before passing them to the dynamic symbol supervisor functions. The last step will be to update the naive trader module so it will subscribe and broadcast to uppercase stream names. As we change stream names to be uppercase, we need to update the Binance Mock module to use uppercase stream names as well. The final step will be to get rid of the core application and remove it from the dependencies of our umbrella applications. And we got it running. So we have now El Elixir registry looking after our workers and we can retrieve those pits from the registry on demand. At this moment, I don't blame you if you have a feeling that this is a little bit cowboy coding because we don't have any tests and anything can break at any moment. We will fix that in the next episode. So if you are interested in that, stay tuned by smashing that like button and subscribing. See you in the next episode.